Some of the things that will affect the stability and performance of design space is just plain system performance. Now, what I mean by that is not just your CPU, but memory and hard drive, how fast your hard drive may be or may not be, things like that can really affect design space and some of the timeout issues and shockwave errors and things like that. It may not be the cause, but it's one culprit that you really want to watch out for. And I'll show you how you can check some of that in this video. So I already have design space loaded. I'm using Firefox at the moment. And I'm going to right click on my taskbar down here at the bottom of Windows and I'm going to click on Start Task Manager. The task Manager allows you to do things like kill tasks and processes. And it also has some performance information that is very important that you know you can use to kind of troubleshoot and tell what's going on with your computer to a degree. So on the Processes tab, this will show everything that I have running on my computer system. So you see I have several instances of Chrome, Flash Player plugins running, of course, because I have Design Space loaded, uh, Windows Explorer, which is pretty much my desktop, the whole desktop environment. Uh, you know, this is my recording software I'm using at the moment, things like that. And over here, you can see how much CPU power and how much memory each of those processes is using. I've had Google Chrome open for quite some time, and it tends to use up a lot of memory over time. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just on my system or what, but I, for whatever reason on my system, it consumes memory. And every now and then, I have to shut it completely down and just restart it and go back into my sites and everything that I'm using. And so if I click on each of these column headers, I can sort and tell which ones are using CPU and memory. And I can, I can click and sort from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. So if I sort from highest to lowest, usually you'll see the system idle process. You can ignore that. That's just an operating system process that keeps the processor active while nothing's using it. So this isn't really doing anything. It is of no concern. Everything below that, you can tell what's using how much of your CPU power. Same thing with memory. If I sort highest to lowest, I can tell which processes are using the most RAM in my computer. I can also right click on a process and click end process and kill that program or that application it's running as well. On the performance tab, I have CPU and memory UC statistics that are real time. They're actually lagged by a couple of seconds probably, but for the most part, this is real time. This is right now. My computer is using 4.83 gigabytes of memory. You can see I have 8,000 megabytes, which is 8 gigabytes of RAM in this particular computer. So I can sit here and watch this and see my CPU cycles. I have a dual core CPU, so it actually has four, it's the equivalent of having four processors in it, you know, compared to the old uh, basic processors like a 486 or a Pentium processor. Okay. Now down here at the bottom, there's a resource monitor button. This will look a little bit different in different versions of Windows. This is Windows 7, and Windows 8 is very similar. It looks just a little different. And if you click that and open it, I'm going to minimize this one and get it out of the way. You can see your CPU, your disk, your network, and your memory all in one page. This is one combined statistic. If I adjust this, we can make it, the timeline a little bit longer. And I can sit here and watch and see what's going on with my computer. Now, if you're just sitting idle, you're not doing anything. Your program, you maybe have a few programs loaded or whatever, but you're not really doing anything. If that's the case, and this green part that you're using your CPU, if it stays up here real high, then you have something going on on your computer that's using CPU power when you're not doing anything and you're going to have to find out what that is. Same thing with the disk. You can see disk usage should go up and down in spikes like this and if your disk usage stays up here real high constantly when you're not doing anything, if you open this up and you sit here and watch this for say five minutes and it never goes down like this, something on your computer is accessing the hard disk. The hard disk is actually one of the slowest parts of your entire computer because it's a mechanical device unless you have a new solid state hard drive, which not as many people do because they're very expensive. So if that's the case, again, you're going to have to figure out what's causing that spike in disk usage. 
the network usage may go up and down some you may not even notice it or may not even see it because typically your internet connection is much slower than the network card in your computer especially if you have it plugged in to a hard wire directly into a cable modem or something uh, versus wireless and then you have your memory as well so if it stays real high constantly then you can have an issue there now Two things that can cause the CPU and disk usage to go high, aside from the programs that are running. So if you have too many things loaded and too many things running, it's overloading the CPU and, and disk possibly. They kind of work in tandem sometimes when they get overloaded as well as the memory, because if you don't have enough memory in your computer, for example, if you only have one gigabyte of RAM, in a Windows 7 or Windows 8 computer, I don't even know if Windows 8 will install on that much memory, but Windows 7 will, and if you have that little bit of memory, chances are it's going to stay at a very high percentage of utilization of your RAM, and what happens is your computer actually stores things on the hard disk in a, what's called a swap file, and it's like it's called virtual memory. So it's a slower alternative and it's kind of like an overflow and when it does that it's very very slow it's thousands of times slower than what the RAM is in your computer so it's having to really swap out things a lot just to function and run and that's when you see your hard drive light flashing all the time even when you're not doing anything so when that happens of course the CPU has work to do to manage all of that and to process all that information on and off the hard disk and in and out of the memory and so it's a kind of a never-ending bad cycle that happens now I'm going to show you an example of how much of an effect design space can have on your computer I'm going to go open a project and this particular project is a pretty large project layout so I'll open up the performance monitor and it'll take a few seconds for this to open so you can watch and see that my hard disk and my CPU usage go way up and my network is spiking as well so if we'll sit here and watch this, wait for it to open. You can see Design Space is still working. It's grayed out back here in the background. I'll move this over a little bit so you can see the little circle there. And this layout is about 38 inches wide and 30, 40 inches tall, I think. This is a retail storefront window that I did one of my other videos on. And when it finally loads, within probably about 10 seconds or so, you'll see the CPU dip back down real low. Like I said, this is a lagged uh, timeline. But now it's loaded, and you see my disk usage drop pretty quickly there. And now you'll see my CPU usage start to drop as well. So if you're having some of those issues where these, the CPU usage, the disk usage, and the memory and network usage are just staying pegged out all the time, it's kind of like running your car at a real high RPM and running it in, in the red line area all the time. It can't do much more than that. So hopefully this has been helpful to, to some of you to figure out what's causing some of your performance issues on your system. Uh, a lot of times I see processors and computers that will meet the requirements of design space, but they get bogged down by the junk software that vendors put on for retail environments so at a baseline yes it will run design space but by the time you pile everything on top of it and it's running all these programs in the background with updaters and all these things it just drags the performance down to the basement and it cannot keep up if you're interested in my support services or consulting services, please visit my website at www.troyyoung.com for most current pricing information. Additionally, you can go to patreon.com slash troyyoung to help support my channel. Hopefully my video has been helpful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to my channel and by all means, please share my videos.